The first daily habit to help you burn fat with intermittent fasting is to break your fast in the later part of the morning, preferably somewhere between 10 a.m. and noon. And during the earlier part of the morning, our stress hormone cortisol is going to be high. And when our cortisol levels are high, it makes us more insulin resistant. Insulin is our storing hormone. And when we're in more of an insulin resistant state, it means that we have to release even more of that insulin in order to get the same response. Now, insulin is largely secreted when we are eating, especially if you're eating foods that are rich in starches and sugars. So by breaking your fast earlier in the morning, when that cortisol level is going to be higher, this can cause the body to release a higher amount of that storing hormone insulin and completely shut off the fat burning process called lipolysis. Now, as we get later into the morning, cortisol levels start to naturally dip back down. So by fasting during this higher cortisol spike, it can help to avoid a really big spike in that storing hormone insulin. So if possible, breaking your fast somewhere in that later morning time, or at least at the latest possible time you can get in the morning, even if it is like 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. and you're not quite getting to that 10 a.m. to noon, just pushing it off to the latest possible time that you can during that morning can really greatly help to avoid that huge spike in insulin. Which my name's Autumn and I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's in nutrition human performance. And today's video is sponsored by a really great electrolyte company called Element. More on them in a bit. The second really important habit to help you increase fat burning when you are intermittent fasting is to have no tech time one hour before bed. So tech time includes your phone, your laptop, your computer, your TV, and and yes, even when these are in dark mode or have blue light blocking shields on them, looking directly into a light, which is exactly what you're doing when you're looking at your phone or your laptop, can really disrupt the sleep hormone melatonin. And that melatonin production is needed to get high quality, deep sleep. And if you're looking to achieve a weight loss goal, you do not want to ignore your sleep. Even just one night of poor sleep can increase your hunger hormone ghrelin, as well as the stress hormone cortisol. So you'll be more hungry, more stressed, and gain weight more easily from a night of poor sleep. Now, I often see this in the comments a lot of questions about what can you do if you don't even have time to get a lot of sleep at the very least you can optimize what sleep you can get and make sure that the sleep you are getting is going to be of the highest quality and this is where that no tech time comes into play. By not looking directly into a light one hour before bed, it can help to naturally raise your melatonin production and help to ensure that the sleep you are getting is of really high quality. Now, instead of using tech, you can opt for an evening walk, you can shower, you can do a face mask, you can read, you can meditate, really whatever you want, as long as you're not looking directly into some tech. Now the third habit to incorporate with intermittent fasting, make sure that you're utilizing fat as fuel is to not snack between your meals. Now I know the emphasis with intermittent fasting is commonly just on that fast period and we kind of forget about that eating window, this is a big mistake because one of the main perks of intermittent fasting, why it can be such a great tool for achieving weight loss is because it naturally allows insulin levels to dip back down. Now, every time you eat, you're going to be releasing that storing hormone insulin. So with that eating window to really optimize for increasing fat burning, you want to make sure that you're sticking to meals and not snacking between those meals, even during that eating window. This allows insulin to naturally dip back down in between those meals as well. Plus as an added perk of not snacking, you just get more activation of that migrating motor complex even between your meals, which helps to flush out food and bacteria that causes bloating. Which if you're looking for some meal ideas that'll actually keep you satiated, I have some really great smoothie recipes like this one right here that you can check out. Now, one thing that you can incorporate during your fast or in between your meals are going to be electrolytes. And in fact, you really should be including electrolytes. When those insulin levels dip back down, a natural response is that it tells the kidneys to no longer hold on to water or sodium. So you start to lose a lot of water and a lot of sodium in the process. Sodium is crucial for sending signals from the brain to the rest of the body and even for muscle contractions. And a mistake that people often do with intermittent fasting is they'll drink a lot of water to replace for what's lost, but they're not adding in any electrolytes, which means they're just further diluting the amount of electrolytes they have in their body, which can lead to something called hyponatremia. And common signs of that can be headaches or muscle fatigue or a constant thirst, even though you are drinking water. Now, something I really love about today's sponsor Element is that they not only include potassium and magnesium, which are really important electrolytes, but they also include sodium, which unfortunately a lot of electrolyte companies often forget about. And that's the electrolyte we're losing in really great quantities, especially if you're exercising. Now Element comes in a lot of different flavors, but I love that they have an unflavored option, which I found is also pretty rare for a lot of electrolyte companies. So if you're looking just for pure electrolytes to get what you need, you can opt for their unflavored option, which is something that I'll often bring with me when I'm traveling or if I'm going on hikes. Now Element is providing my users, the AM peeps, seven of their electrolyte replacements for free, and you only have to pay for the shipping. This is a really great way for you to 
to test it out, see if it's something you enjoy, while also making sure that you're getting your electrolytes in during your fast. You can check out the details for the seven element electrolyte replacements in the link down description below. Now the fourth daily habit is to make sure that you're not eating two hours before bed. Because speaking of that poor quality sleep from the second habit, eating too close to bed can also really impair sleep. Allowing for that few hours of digestion before bed can help you to further increase your sleep quality. This tip also helps you to better determine what your intermittent fasting eating window will be. So this is a good one to factor in when you're planning your eating window and your fasting period. Now a side tip for this, if you can't get a full two hours in before bed, I would recommend at least going for a walk after dinner. This can also help stimulate digestion as well. Now the fifth habit for intermittent fasting is to incorporate strength training or resistance training three to five times per week. Now we've talked a lot on this channel about walking and the amazing benefits of walking. So I didn't want to dive too much into walking, but if you haven't seen those videos, you can check out this one right here. But in addition to that, if you're ready to take it to the next step, incorporating strength training or resistance training is a really great way to help further improve insulin sensitivity. Strength training can help our muscles to literally just sponge up glucose from our blood supply, which means that we won't need as much insulin to get those blood glucose levels back down. And remember insulin is our storing hormone. So we don't want that to get really high because those insulin levels aren't going to be skyrocketing as a result of the muscles helping to absorb some of those sugar molecules. This in itself can make it easier to switch back into utilizing fat as a fuel source and allowing that fat burning process called lipolysis to turn back on. Now what you choose can really depend on your preference. This can be lifting weights or you can incorporate more calisthenic style squats and pushups. It's just important to make sure that your muscles are actually getting challenged. And what you eat during your eating window really matters and it can absolutely make or break your results. So you can check out this video next for those details. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.